Welcome to episode 7 of Pop 4 of Koi's Corner. Today we're talking to Hub and Sharon. I'm going to give a belt. I got to give a belt and, and, and Momo. And type. And Kawa. And type L. If you enjoy it, be great. Are you done? And I'll share one other thing with you and then I'll shut up. <laughs> um, I had a girl come into my office one day and we don't meet every day for prayer and all this before we start our day. And we've been there working together probably for half. She came in my office and said, can I talk? I said, sure. And she closed the door uh, and she, I turned around to me and she was crying. And I said, what's wrong? first words out of her mouth was, I know you're a man of God. And I found out that I possibly could have something wrong physically, cancer type thing. And she asked me if I would, I said, oh, absolutely. And I told that Tamara and I said, Tamara, I have not said anything other than one of our policies were we, uh, are honest with ourselves, first of all, very honest with ourselves, follow the policies and procedures of the company, and we tell the truth. Those were the things, three things that I didn't, I said everything else would sell. And those are the only things I didn't go in there and tell them I go to church and I'm a street preacher, whatever it might be. So what I'm saying in all that is not, I hope this doesn't come across as arrogant. What I'm saying is we can live lives where people see Jesus in us and they want that. And not long after that, got a call on a Sunday morning. Think about this. Got a call on a Sunday morning from a co-worker saying, uh, I need some help. And I said, what is it? I'm thinking, you know, I got to go get him some gas or, you know, whatever. He said, I've got a friend at the hospital sick. You pray with me. Wow. Okay. So all of that is, this is not about her. This is about us living a life. Christ and people will see that and you don't have to go around with a Jesus shirt on or a sign and I'm saying I'm not saying that's that's wrong but I'm saying at the end of the day you can say a whole lot people are looking at who you are they're looking at who you are oh yeah I'm for this and I'm for that and the rubber meets the road and there ain't nowhere around it so that's my two cents as far as experiences that I've had for uh I can say to you guys that the two instances in my many, many years of life where Jesus has seen, where people have seen Jesus in me, it's only two. <laughs> so see, I've got, I've got some work to do. The point is this, folks, um, uh, and I don't mean to diminish protests or anything like that, but, but now what? Now what are we going to do? We have, you and, we're all having this conversation today. Okay. What's our marching orders? Beat this completely. What's my marching orders to the rest of the day? What are my marching orders in relationship to me? And, and, and I have to realize that I'm accountable to all of you guys in my life. I'm accountable to you guys in everything that I do and say because you never know who you're talking to or who might be impacting by what you're doing. Saying. The last thing you want somebody to say. Oh, he's an elder at the church? You're kidding me. Or he's the youth minister at the church? You're kidding me. Or she goes to church? You know, what they're saying is that we're not choosing consistency in our character because people see different folks depending on the situation. So um, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. I know it was for me. I was glad to hear from you, Sharon, um, because – I'm kind of, when, when I talk to my kids, uh, my son, like I said, is married to a white girl. My, my daughter is married to a black guy. And you, you should see, I wish I could videotape every time they're together. It is just so, so heartwarming and so funny and just, just well, Herb, they have to be their brother and sister-in-law. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, yeah. they, don't. they really don't. And see, <laughs> see that. And, um, but it's just so heartwarming. And so I, I, you know, I feel for, not feel for Sharon. I understand what she is as a mom. 
concerned with, those types of things. But at the end of the day, guys, uh, just need to. It's all about Jesus and pointing folks to the cross. Just, just point folks to the cross by what you, what you say. So, well, oh man, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I lost. I lost the picture again. What I'm doing? I can hear you. I can see you too. Yeah, I can. Once again. Yeah. yeah. I can't see you guys. Oh well. All right, well, <laughs> y'all know what I look like, so you don't know. the computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, oh. Sorry, Corey, if you want to go ahead. Yeah. No, uh, but, Harvey, you uh, need to get out of here. I don't even know what time it is. I've not been looking at this It's almost 530. Yeah, I've, I, I've missed two birthdays since we've been on here, so. <laughs> Way you can actually oh, do that is actually How do you manage to do that? <laughs> um, yeah. Honestly, your thoughts and, and input perspective are just endlessly helpful because we've got tiers of perspective and generation and, and different locations that you've each come from. Educating myself on things that I've not known. Like for my own ignorances, history in general has always been just one of those things that I'm like, yeah, you know, it was in the past. It doesn't affect me um through high school through college that's always how i approached it and then and then you get to points where you can't really ignore the fact that oh that old adage of if you don't remember your history you're bound to repeat it type of thing uh, comes full circle and herb to your point and i think tyrell the protest you're at and what we're seeing nationwide people in general and our our, our generations they are they're kind of just they're they're just fed up with the norm that has been set and maintained and silenced and, and Sharon, it was really interesting to hear you talk about that, that being the hope of the awareness, that turning point of even just that guy's willingness to come level with you and be real as opposed yeah. to the option of, of putting it under the rug and PR reason and off you go to see where we're at and, you guys alluded to it. Y'all watched the Rodney King stuff in, in 94 and how a nation responded or didn't respond and what that looked like from different parts of the country. I am, I am beyond thankful just to have opportunities to sit down and talk with y'all and to hear how we can try and be that to each other and show Jesus to each other with listening, learning. What, what is, what is your, advice and next step for for people moving forward from here i know sharon you've been getting that question what can we do a lot and even more to herb's point of just the action where does that look like in our lives when we're at school when we're at work in, in a, a general capacity of interacting at church so how would you advise people as we sort of wrap this up this is a productive way to to move forward and, and to try and help make progress to being better um for i uh i guess this this is just my opinion i just i hope that people were more willing to listen in the past and i've been met with anger off the bat the second i try and mention any of this it happened with my dad if you don't know my parents are white i told my dad and my mom i said hey I think we need to have a conversation about all of this. I was immediately met with pushback from my dad, who is very, very, I guess, opinionated. Um, and I, there just didn't seem like any willingness to listen. And I'm like, I'm, I'm your son. Like, can you, I just want parents who are going to listen to me, people in general who are going to listen. I was met with so much pushback of being, I was accused of being anti-white, anti-cop, non-Christian in the same sentence for my parents. Like, all because I asked, can we please talk about racial issues in America? That's literally like the text that I sent. I asked to talk about that. And I was immediately met with anger. So of course, when my dad tried to call me, I wasn't answering. Cause I was like, I know he's mad. And I, then I don't, and then I'm 
like, do I even want to have this conversation anymore? You know? Um, but I just, I, I really hope that um, moving forward that people are willing to listen because the only way the change is going to happen is if we do something. But first, people have to be willing to listen, period. And just be willing to listen to opinions that differ from, from ours. And I have to be willing to listen too. Like, I, like, you know, that my, when I, me and my mom were finally able to talk about all of this, me and my dad never talked. <laughs> so me and my mom talked. <laughs> and uh, it was a good conversation. I literally called my sister and I said, I had the best conversation with mom I probably ever had, ever. I'm going on this, I'm 27. They took me in when I was 17. So this is year 10. And I said, this, I probably had the best conversation I've ever had with mom, period. Because she explained a lot of things to me about the way her and dad feel that I, I wasn't aware of. I had to listen. You know, I asked them, hey, can you just be conscious of, you know, the things that I deal with as a black person? Y'all brought me in. So, like, that, that you know, there's a lot y'all don't know. But there's also a lot that I didn't know. And, you know, my mom educated me in some ways and kind of, she was like, Tyrell, I really, you know, in her mind, she felt that we didn't need to have that conversation because she, she was more of like, Tyrell, you've seen our actions. You've seen our actions towards you. I mean, they sent me to college. I got a truck. I mean, they let me live in their house at the last two years of high school. They hadn't had kids in their house since 2002, and I showed up in 2010. Like, you know, and I and I, and I was like, okay, I was like, okay, okay. I can understand why my mom's like, why are we having this conversation? You know, I can understand that, and I and I understood it. I was like, okay, that makes sense. So I just want the conversation to be open, both sides, both every everybody conversation just needs to be open um and civil i don't like there's no need for shouting there's no need for trying to drill in a point and thinking i'm gonna win this argument the hill i die on you know just no that's not that's not it that's not how we're supposed to operate that's not how jesus calls us to operate you know um because i mean jesus you know he was like hey follow me you know he wanted everyone you know to follow him but he's like he's not sitting here condemning every single person who didn't want anything to do with him you know or whose opinion deferred from his he shouldn't be like that either so i just hope that we get to have open conversation moving forward and then these conversations become normal to where they're not even awkward anymore so that's where i hope that we can be moving forward um especially the church and Honestly, in my opinion, New Hope is the right place for all of this because there's a lot of open minds in New Hope and I'm very thankful to be a part of it. I'm very thankful to be a part of this conversation in general. You know, 10 years ago, this I, I don't think this conversation would have happened, honestly. And so just the fact that this conversation is a thing, just the, you know, the fact the elders came together and say, yeah, like, shoot, let's do it. Like, let's go for it. Like that, you know, when Corey called me back, I was kind of shocked. One is not shocked that they were like, okay, yes, but more shocked that the response was so quick. It was like, Hey, yeah, Tyra, we're good. We're good to go. And I'm just like, Oh wow. Already? Like they didn't deliberate. Like, you know, just, <laughs> you know, you just, you, you, you know, you want the best, but you prepare for the worst, you know, just, and so um, I was just, I was shocked, <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm just happy. I'm happy that I'm going to go away from this whole conversation, happy and feeling better. That's awesome. Listen, that's great. Sharon. I think, um, and I know if my kids watch this, which I don't know that they will, but they always say I have terrible timing with things. But um, I also, like these conversations are really good, but if we're going to do what we're saying, 
which is be like Jesus, you need to be prepared. So like um, the people who are like, you know what? I was never racist. I just taught my children that treat, don't treat anyone poorly because of the color of their skin. Well, then, and then, then they're the one shocked that their child is in an interracial marriage. When we say be like Jesus, it's not just to one group of people to another. It's because you can't control them. You can control you. And in that same time when you're like, yeah, they need to treat me fairly and treat my kids fairly. But then I get mad at the lady at the fast food restaurant who didn't get my order right. Like, when you say be like Jesus, it's not be like Jesus in the area where it applies to you. It's be like Jesus. And, and just like we give ourselves grace when we mess up and say, okay, God, forgive me for that. We're going to have to give all of ourselves grace in this conversation for us to get to a better place. Because I'll have people who will make a comment that might be insensitive or um, condescending. And then depending on my relationship with that person, I might, might either let it go or I might just be like, hey, just so you know, I know your heart. But when you said that, this is how it came across to me. And just like, I would have to have grace not to just flip out when they say that, just like Tyrell is saying, if I open the door to say, when you did this, this hurt me, please hear me. Please, you know, be there. But like, I think the biggest shock is that when we tell everyone to start being like Jesus, there are things that God is going to come in and take care of that we have no clue. We think it's about this and God is like, no, I'm about to overhaul this whole thing and you don't even know it yet. Yeah. You know, and it's going to put us in a better place, but it's just like when you're cleaning out a room, the beginning of the cleaning process, it looks worse than it did when everything was hidden and compacted together. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and to, so to not get discouraged, to continue to say, okay, God, we're relying on you to get through this. And right now this looks worse. Like, why did I even say anything? And in that moment to say, you keep coming back to me every time, every day, you keep coming back to me so that, Maybe in the next 10 minutes, it don't look so great. But the next year, you're like, I never thought I would be in this place at this time in this way. So I think my biggest thing is just the way we fix it is to be like Jesus, but be ready. Because mm -hmm. it's, and, I'm, and, and I think as I'm saying this, I'm just letting it bounce off my computer screen. Because that means if I'm going to tell people to be like Jesus, I can't get mad because somebody does something that, you know, that I think, well, this deserves my wrath, you know, <laughs> whereas those people need to be nice to me, you know, like you have to, you have to embrace it all. And the thing is, is God has equipped us all to do that. He knows where all of us are coming from. He knows all of our stories and how difficult it is for me to go to someone and to say, um, this really hurt me when you did that. Like, that would be difficult for me. Tyrell seems like an awesome person. By the way, when I see you at church, I'm gonna give you a big old hug because I've never had this long a conversation with you. No, I but, know. <laughs> but, like, he it. seems like he's very open to say, hey, this is how I'm feeling. I wanna have this conversation. That is like, I'm very happy I decided to do this, but I almost didn't. <laughs> so like for me to, to say, hey, when you said this, it could like, everyone's their own individual so to be available and ready to offer grace to ourselves when we mess up to not have some some people are just i feel so guilty you mess up i mess up that's what jesus is for if we were going to be perfect what would be the point of jesus so to give ourselves grace but to understand if we're going to invite god to do a thing we need to let him do it you hit the nail on the head yeah that that, that's, that was amazing Everything I was saying, I was like, you know, I was thinking like, man, I'm saying, I'm saying some pretty heavy stuff. Like I better hold myself accountable. I got to be living like Jesus. <laughs> I can't let him be empty words. <laughs> well, that metaphor about the room, once you start cleaning, it looks a little bit worse. Like that's, you should be a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. <laughs>
<laughs> now that is that's beautiful uh, and from all of you guys again thank you just so much for just the time and the the thoughts and emotion i mentioned to herb the other day because the other reality of it is when, when people like myself or mark or or, or people call in and asking what can I do and, and and then ask to have conversations like this and then ask you to think about experiences like you've gone through we don't realize the complexity of what it is we're actually asking sometimes right. um, and so I think I think for y'all to be willing to just offer whatever it took and the vulnerability is is huge and people are going to be blessed by this I'm positive of it um, hey Corey I want to share one more thing from Bill Heibel's book um, it, it, it's it, consistently in this book is talking about character who we are and he said character qualities are more easily caught than taught it's like young plants like Sharon was saying they develop best we do our best and want to be better in a warm nurturing atmosphere um, and speaking about plant and that is exactly what God offers best possible example of character Jesus Christ best possible school for character today is not too late to take the first step of courage and say yes Lord I want to be like Jesus please take me into your family love me into your life and like Sharon said uh, say it be ready because God's going to answer that prayer um, in more ways than one Want to be like me? Want to be like my son? Okay, and he'll answer that prayer for us.